Hello, my dear friends, and welcome to our today's class. It's our eighth and last lesson on the fourth topic of Form 3 work, which is called Work Energy, Power and Machines. As usual, let me start by giving you the quote of the day, which states that those who have learned the art of self-discipline are on their path to greatness. We shall discuss that quote at the end of our class today. So today we are just looking at uh, further simple machines. So under pulleys, we have what we call the pulley belts. So this is a typical pulley belt whereby we have the driving pulley uh, where we apply the effort and the driven pulley which acts as our load. So to find the velocity ratio for a pulley belt, you simply use the formula. Uh, that is, you take the radius of the driven pulley. So the radius of this particular small driven pulley or the pulley that has the load, then you divide by the radius of the driving pulley. That is this particular uh, pulley that where we apply the effort. So velocity ratio can as well be given by the radius of the, uh, the pulley where the load is applied divided by the radius of the pulley where our effort is applied. Alternatively, we can also give the velocity ratio in terms of the number of revolutions made by the effort uh, pulley and also the number of revolutions made by the load pulley. So velocity ratio shall be given by the number of revolutions made by the effort divided by the number of revolutions made by the load. So the formula that determines what you shall, uh, the formula that you will use in a particular question, it will depend on uh, the information that is provided in that particular question. For example, if you are given the red eye of the driven pulley and the red eye and the radius of the uh, driving pulley, then you will use velocity ratio, you simply take the radius of the driven pulley divided by the radius of the driving pulley. But if you are given the number of revolutions made by the effort uh, pulley uh, and the number of revolutions made by the load pulley, then to find the velocity ratio, you'll use the formula. Uh, you take the number of revolutions made by the effort divided by the number of revolutions made by the load. Then the last type of uh, simple machine is what we call the hydraulic machines remember we did learn about the hydraulic uh, brake system that is in form one under the applications of pressure so we have our hydraulic fluid here then we have the load that we want to raise um, this is what we call the load piston then we have the effort piston where we apply our effort and we want to use to apply this particular effort so that uh, our hydraulic fluid uh, transmits pressure equally to the other end so that we can use it to raise our load. So for the case of hydraulic machines, the velocity ratio shall be given by uh, the quotient between the cross-sectional area of the load piston and the cross-sectional area of the effort piston. So you simply take the cross-sectional area of the uh, load piston here, then you divide by the cross-sectional area of the effort piston piston that is if you want to find the velocity ratio now because um the areas are usually in circular shape so to find the cross-sectional area of the load piston we'll simply take pi r squared that is the radius of a circle but now the radius we use the radius at the load piston which is noted by capital r therefore velocity ratio will be equal to pi r squared that is the cross-sectional area of the load piston divided by pi r squared, that is the cross-sectional area at the effort piston. Because remember, our effort piston has a radius of small r. Therefore, to find the area of the this particular uh, cross-sectional area, you simply take pi r squared, where r is the radius of the effort piston. So from this particular formula, actually because pi is a constant, it can cancel out. Therefore, the velocity ratio can as well be given by the square of the radius of the load piston divided by the square of the radius of the effort piston. So we have two formulas that we can use uh, to calculate the velocity ratio for hydraulic machines. So the first formula, you simply take the area, uh, that is the area of the cross-section of the load piston divided by the area of the cross-section of the effort piston. If you are given the radius, uh, the radii of the two uh, pistons, you can use you can just take the square of the radius of the load piston divided by the square of the radius of the 
effort piston. So actually the formula that you use, uh, it will depend on what is provided on that particular question. Although like for this particular case, actually provided you have the radius, you can either divide the areas or you can also divide the square of the radii of the load piston uh, divided by the effort piston. So next, let's look at an example on how we can apply the formulas that we have just stated um, in our previous page. So the first question reads that the radius of the effort piston of a hydraulic lift is 1.4 centimeters, while that of the load piston is 7 centimeters. So this machine is used to raise a load of 120 kilogram at a constant velocity uh, through a height of 2.5 meter. Remember, whenever we talk of vertical height, that is the load distance. Then we are given that the machine is 80% efficient. Then we are part A, we are required to calculate the effort needed to raise that particular load. So for us to find the effort, we must have the mechanical advantage because we know that mechanical advantage is equal to the ratio of the load divided by uh, the effort. So if we find mechanical advantage, then we'll be in an easier position to find the effort needed to raise that particular load. Now, because we are given the efficiency and we can also, we are given the radius of the load piston and the effort piston, meaning that we can easily find our velocity ratio. So from the formula of efficiency, efficiency equals mechanical advantage over velocity ratio times 100%. Therefore, we can just find the velocity ratio so that it can help us to find the mechanical advantage. Now, we have said that for a, a hydraulic uh, press or for a hydraulic uh, fluid or, or for a hydraulic system or for hydraulic machines, the velocity ratio should be given by the square of the radius of the load piston to the square of the radius of the effort piston. Then from the question, we are given the effort piston of the hydraulic lift has a radius of, uh, that is, is 1.4 centimeters and the while that of the load piston is 7 centimeters. So the radius of the load piston, capital R, is 7 centimeters. So we take 7 squared divided by the radius of the effort piston, which is 1.4 centimeters. So we take 1.4 squared. So 7 squared divided by 1.4 squared. If you perform that uh, computation, you will get 25. Then also remember that velocity ratio is... Uh, that is, it is a ratio, therefore it does not have any units. Therefore, our velocity ratio is 25. Now, we know that efficiency is equal to mechanical advantage or velocity ratio times 100%. Therefore, if we want to find our mechanical advantage, we simply substitute the value for the efficiency and the value for the velocity ratio that we have computed up here. Remember, we are finding mechanical advantage because we know that once we have the mechanical advantage and the load, finding if, it, if the effort needed will not be a problem because we know that mechanical advantage is load over effort. Therefore, the efficiency of the machine we are given as 80% efficient. Therefore, 80% is equal to mechanical advantage over velocity ratio, which is 25 multiplied by 100%. If we want to remain with mechanical advantage only on the right hand side, we'll simply multiply both sides by the reciprocal of 100% over 25. So the reciprocal is actually 25 over 100 percent. Therefore, we multiply both sides by 25 over 100 percent so that we eliminate uh, 25 or 100 percent over 25 from the right hand side so that we just remain with mechanical advantage. Therefore, if we multiply both sides, we'll have 25 uh, cancelling with this 25, 100 percent cancelling with 100 percent. Then on the left hand side, we have 25 over 100 percent times 80 percent so percent and percent will cancel out so that we remain with 25 times 80 divided by uh, 100 so that will simply give us 20 so mechanical advantage in this case will be 20 again remember mechanical advantage is also a ratio therefore it does not have any units next we look at uh, now the formula for mechanical advantage because mechanical advantage is load over effort remember part a wanted us to find the uh, effort needed. Then we are told that uh, the machine is used to raise a load of 120 kilogram. Because we have the, the mass, we can easily find the weight of that particular load. 
Now we know that uh, load, that is weight or the load, is equal to mass times gravity and we are given the mass is 120 kilogram. Therefore, mechanical advantage is equal to load over effort. So mechanical advantage, we have calculated it as 20. So 20 is equal to the load. Remember load is mass times gravity or the weight of that particular load is mass times gravity divided by the effort. Therefore, uh, mechanical advantage is 20 is equal to mass times gravity, we are given the mass of the load as 120 kilogram, then gravity on earth is usually 10 newton per kilogram, then we divide by the effort. So if uh, I try to make uh, both sides to be fractions, I'll simply take 20 divided by 1 is equal to, that is uh, 120 times 10 divided by the effort needed. So if I do cross multiplication and make E or the effort subject of the formula, I'll have effort being equal to 1200 divided by 20 which gives me 60 newton therefore the effort needed to raise that particular load was actually 60 newton then part b they want us to find the energy wasted in using this particular machine so the energy wasted can be computed in two ways so one we can use the formula for efficiency whereby area on we say that efficiency can as well be given by the ratio of the work output to the work input expressed as a percentage therefore efficiency uh, i just substitute the values because i already have the my efficiency which we were given as 80 percent uh the work output so remember the work output is given by load times the load distance so because we have the load and we are told that the machine is used to raise a load of 120 kilogram at a constant velocity through a height of 2.5 meter remember the vertical height that is the load distance. So because we have the load and the load distance, we can easily find our work output. So work output is simply load times the load distance. Therefore, our efficiency is 80%. So 80% uh, percent is equal to uh, work output load times load distance. Our load was uh, had a mass of 120 kg. To convert into Newton, we simply talk of mg. Therefore, the mass of 120 times 10. So that gives us... 1200 uh, newton therefore the work output is the load which is uh, 120 times 10 that is our load the load distance is 2.5 meters remember load distance is simply the vertical height or the vertical yeah the vertical height of maybe uh, a given inclined plane therefore 80 is equal to 120 times 10 times 2.5 divided by the work input then we express it as a percentage so if I make work output, no, the work input to be the subject of the formula, I'll simply have work input being equal to 120 times 10 uh, times 2.5 divided by 0 0.8. Remember 0 0.8 is coming because you have already divided both sides by 100. So 8 divided by 100, you'll obtain the 0 0.8. So if you perform this calculation, that is 120 times 10 times 2.5, then the answer that you get, you divide by 0 0.8. You will get the work input as 3750 joules then the wasted energy will simply be the difference between the work input and the work output because if we had a larger work input then we are obtaining a smaller work output it means that energy has been lost or energy has been wasted therefore the difference between the work input and the work output will give us the uh, energy wasted in using this machine now remember from this formula we already have the value of the work input so we only need to compute the value for the work output and we know that work output is simply load times the load distance so wasted energy is equal to the difference between work input and the work output so work input we have computed it as 3750 joules minus the work input is the load times the load distance so the load had a mass of 120 kg then uh, we know that uh, if we want the weight, we simply take mass times gravity. So 120 times 10, we'll get uh, then in Newton, that is the, the weight, that is 120 times 10. Then the load distance was actually 2.5 meters, so 2.5 meters. So load, which is uh, 1,200 times the load distance, gives us the work output. Therefore, work input, which is uh, 3,750 minus the work output. So if you compute 120 times 10 times 2.5, you'll actually get 3,000 newton. Therefore, 
the wasted energy will be the work input which is 3750 minus the work output which is uh, 3000 newton no 3000 joules so the difference will actually give you 750 joules so that becomes the wasted energy alternatively you can also find the wasted energy by taking 20 percent because if the machine is 80 percent efficient it means that 20 percent of the work input is actually lost so the loss energy can as well be computed by taking 20 percent that is 100 minus 80 percent by taking 20 percent of the work input so if you take 20 percent of 3750 joules you will still obtain the wasted energy of 750 joules so we have those two methods so you can find the work input my, the difference between work input and the work output alternatively you can just take 20 percent of the work input so that that will give you uh the wasted energy so we've come to the end of our class today but we need to discuss the quote of the day the quote of the day stated that those who have learned the art of self-discipline are on their path to greatness so the quote is reminding us that self-discipline and self-control are very essential ingredients for our success in life so the quote is further instructing us to take charge of our lives by nurturing good habits that will help us to develop a good character remember they always say that a good character will uh, that is a good cv will take you will earn you a job or will take you to a place but a good character is the one that will maintain you there so character is very very important Remember when we talk of a character, we are talking of uh, the positive habits, for example, uh, hard being hardworking, being self-controlled, uh, having the right mindset, that is having a good attitude towards work, uh, etc. And lastly, recall that if you don't choose to suffer the pain of self-discipline today, then you will be forced to suffer the pain of self-regret in future. So remember, I also have an exercise here that I do recommend you should try it at your own free time to gauge whether you have understood uh, the concept that you have learned in this particular lesson. Thank you very much. Until next time, this is Kind Tuition Academy. But in case you are new to the channel, kindly hit the subscription button and, so, and also turn on the notification bell so that whenever I upload new video, you will get always get notified. If you know any student or anyone that you honestly think could benefit from this content, kindly, kindly refer them to Kind Tuition Academy. Thank you very much. Until next time, this is Kind Tuition Academy.